earlier tonight. That was so long ago. It was still football season. Crazy. On senior day, Tony Tosha Morelos makes his first attempt. So now here's Alabama, losers of their last four, trying to right the ship. They have a tournament-worthy resume, but they're trying to find something, anything to help. Dante Hall wore two different shoes today to see if that'll help, and he's off the mark with his first attempt. Well, he's actually been wearing two different shoes since the Tennessee game when he had 20 points. I spoke with him about it at shoot-around. He says he's very superstitious, and he just believes in it. Try to play it off like he didn't know he accidentally put on two different shoes. Come on. Every player knows when you put on two different shoes, although they're both KDs. There is the feed of the top, and Alabama unable to knock that one down. Hogue gives it up. Admon Gilder able to get deep, and a teardrop goes. I, I think whatever team's able to control transition is going to be the team that's going to win this game. How many looks can you get free of playing against the half-court set defensively? That's all for us as Miami wins it 69 68. A final heave by Clark. Now they should have got probably tried to get the ball to Justin Robinson, but they ran out of time. And both teams, great defense, but Miami made the plays when they had to at the end. Good way to start this Saturday on the final weekend of the regular season. Thanks for watching. Now let's take you out to Alabama and Texas AM in College Station. Thank you, and welcome to Reed Arena. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham, Alabama and Texas A&M meeting for the second time this season. The Tide in desperate need of a series sweep to help their postseason hopes. Colin Sexton has a bucket for Alabama and Texas A&M on their second possession. What are you looking for today, Sean Farnham? Well, A&M's got a value basketball in the opening two possessions, two careless turnover opportunities for Alabama. And they've got a value a lot better as another turnover here on this possession. And if fortunate, Dazon Ingram stepped out of bounds. But right now, A&M cannot throw an entry pass in their offense. But you mentioned these two teams met, met December 30th. It was the first game of the SEC schedule. There was no Gilder. He was out with injury. And no DJ Hogue. He was out with suspension. Dwayne Wilson was also out with injury. And, of course, he's out tonight, as he has been in the last couple of games, after having surgery and ending his career here on senior day walking out with his parents earlier tonight that was so long ago it was still football season crazy on senior day tony Tosha morelos makes his first attempt so now here's alabama losers of their last four trying to right the ship they have a tournament worthy resume but they're trying to Find something, anything to help. Dante Hall wore two different shoes today to see if that'll help, and he's off the mark with his first attempt. Well, he's actually been wearing two different shoes since the Tennessee game when he had 20 points. I spoke with him about it at shoot-around. He says he's very superstitious, and he just believes in it. Tried to play it off like he didn't know he accidentally put on two different shoes. Come on. Every player knows when you put on two different shoes, although they're both KDs. There is the feed of the top, and Alabama unable to knock that one down. Hogue gives it up. Admon Gilder able to get deep, and a teardrop goes. I, I think whatever team's able to control transition is going to be the team that's going to win this game. How many looks can you get free of playing against the half-court set defensively? Dejon Ingram throws in a three, and we're tied at five. Gilder carried it, and there's a Texas A&M turnover. Here's a look at the SEC standings right now. Florida won at home against Kentucky. And there's a chance Kentucky will have to play on Thursday at the SEC tournament. That has not happened under John Calipari. 
We enter today with the top two seeds known in the SEC tournament. It will be Auburn and Tennessee in one order or another, one, two. The remaining 12 seeds at the beginning of today were all up for grabs in the final day of the regular season. Three on two break for Alabama. Sexton recovers and fires. What have you seen from Colin Sexton over the length of the season? Well, I think he's gotten a little bit fatigue factors hit him a little bit. Uh, he, he's not a great communicator out on the floor offensively or defensively. He's got a great first step He's a free throw attempting guard Which means he's able to get that first burst of energy by you and earn trips to the free throw line His three-point shot has regressed uh, as we saw in that possession there That's a shot he could take at any time so time and possession understanding when to shoot the shot I think is going to be key in his development. He is third in the league in scoring But he's missed his last seven three-point attempts going back a couple of games and Alabama turns it over T.J. Starks assumed the point guard role late in the season. He's been magnificent for AM. And then Hogue gets shoved. Talking with Billy Kennedy before the game today about the point guard situation for Texas AM because I feel at this point like I've coached five different teams this season. He pretty much has. I mean, he's had guys with suspensions, injuries, multiple suspensions, dismissals from the team. I mean, you came into the year thinking J.J. Caldwell was going to be your guard. He's not even on the roster now. Mm -hmm. So Starks, the freshman from Dallas, has taken over that role. He's been fantastic as a starter. Good defense inside right now by Alabama, not allowing Tyler Davis to have any clean look. Extra effort on the offensive glass. Davis comes down with it. We'll take it right back to the rack and a nice reverse for the bucket. Now, they might not be a better offensive rebounder in all of the SEC. And it's been that way since day one here in College Station. A little sloppy early for Alabama. John Petty tries to find it. He tried to wrap around pass and Hogue got his hands on it. We'll have four seconds on the shot clock when we return. Seven to five here. Let's take you to the studio and check in with Kevin Connors. All right, Tom, obviously big one in College Station, real big one and all the rest of the way for this team. And for the team that had such high hopes of making the NCAA tournament, they need to take care of business here on the road. Year three of the Andrew Johnson era. We've got a travel on an up and down, and Alabama turns it over again. Alabama's third turnover. Avery Johnson got excited about this season because of this fantastic freshman class they have, one of the best recruiting classes in Alabama history. Then injuries hit this team, and then inconsistency, as you would expect from freshmen. They're not alone. Everyone in the SEC, aside from the top two teams, Auburn and Tennessee, every single team has had a three-game losing streak at one point this season. The tough part is when this losing streak has come for Alabama. Right, because it's the lasting memory that you have heading in to championship week next week. Dejan Ingram gets tied up, and we got a jump ball to stay this direction. Now, the selection committee is going to look at the overall body of work for Alabama. We know that. They no longer consider the last 12 games of the season. But if you can't win today... You're going to have a hard time playing well in St. Louis, you would think. Right. It's and not trending in the right direction. Right, and, and I think that's important. And, you know, when you're looking around and you're seeing teams like Penn State playing in the semifinals right now, and what Coach Chambers has been able to do, and Tony Carr and how well he's played for the Nittany Lions. You need to handle your business. You mm -hmm. can't be looking around and hoping that others are losing and are going to help you out. Help yourself out by finding a way to win. The other night against Florida, and I had that game on Tuesday, they went almost 15 minutes without a made field goal on their home floor. That's tough to do. Here's Edmond Gilder. That one was halfway home. Alabama at one point in that drought missed 19 consecutive field goals. We asked Avery Johnson before the game today, what's the difference in what you guys are doing in practice versus what's happening in the game? So we've been more, we're so much more patient in practice, and therefore we get an extra shot, an extra pass, we get a better shot. Have you seen impatience from Avery's squad today? Well, I just saw great patience right there. I mean, good job by Dante Hall to make the extra pass. Galen Smith, don't overcomplicate it. Get deep position, catch, and go up with your jump hook. Jump stop for Hogue, and he kicks it back out. And Robert Williams has just checked into the game. You know he's going to want to get a look. Waiting on the baseline for it. Instead, it's a contested three with four on the shot clock. 
And another offensive rebound for Tyler Davis. Both of his buckets have come on offensive boards. Now he does such a good job wedging in and creating space. He pushes the offensive player with his lower body underneath the rim. By doing so, it allows him to get a better opportunity to gather the offensive rebound and finish. Colin Sexton looking for some help. Out for a three, and that one is short. Jalen Smith trying to work on the inside. Alabama will be without Herbert Jones today. Still working his way back after knocking heads in the Florida game. And a turnover on the baseline for Alabama. Let's get up to offensive possession, though. And you just see Tyler Davis. You see with that left arm, he wedges Hall underneath the rim. And once he gets his hands on it, there's nothing you can do. A shot blocker cannot block a shot when the best option is for your hand to go through the hoop. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be illegal. So you get your rules. So it's about doing your work and, and, and having that wherewithal when the shot goes up, you're consistently using your lower body, your strength, to create an opportunity that gives you the best chance to be successful. Tyler Davis has done that since day one. It's also a 30-pound weight advantage for Davis inside against Hall. Former Aggie Avery Johnson Jr. on the floor for the first time for Alabama. Started his college career here. Look at this. It would have been his senior night. Nice dump. And a foul. Two of the best shot blocking teams in the SEC. And this one's going to go against Tony Trocha Morelos on his senior night. He's now saddled with two personal fouls. And free throws coming for Galen Smith, French uh, freshman from Clinton, Mississippi. And he just gets it. I mean, he's a player that can really absorb information uh, and has, like, that old soul mentality. Tonight at 815 Eastern on ESPN, it's part two of college basketball's greatest rivalry, and it's a sonic blockbuster. Tar Heels beat the Blue Devils February 8th in a four-point win at Chapel Hill. This one's at Cameron Indoor, though. Number nine, North Carolina. Number five, Duke, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Once again, in that great rivalry, it is a top ten showdown. It is unbelievable, the consistency within those programs and just how much these games matter. I mean, it may not matter as far as Virginia already locking up the ACC regular season championship, but it certainly will matter as far as seed line goes for Selection Sunday. That game always matters. Lob inside. Ingram caught, and it's swatted away by Smith. Another offensive rebound opportunity. Denied inside by Alabama. Freshman Petty finds Ingram. Back to Petty. He will launch. John Petty shooting 50% from three over the last couple of games, but went just one for ten in the blowout against Auburn. Well, Avery Johnson gets a bump. Save on flag with the foul. We are packed and ready for St. Louis, but we still have to decide who's going to be where. When we return, we'll take a peek ahead of the SEC tournament. P.J. Washington. Kevin Knox, Quade Green, and Shea Gilgis Alexander. I like that combination for them. They lost to a team today in Florida uh, that came off that road, went against Alabama, and protected its home court like you'd anticipate they would. Alex Reese drains a three. Avery Johnson told us today he's got to shoot more of those. By the way, you mentioned Kentucky losing 80 to 67 today in Gainesville. What a huge win for Mike White as that team tries to find some momentum going to Lou. I talked about this on Tuesday when they won at Alabama, and I said, look, you know, the way the SEC is this year versus even where it was a year ago, you can say that an 11-win team is better than a 14-win team from a season ago because of the, sh the sheer competitiveness of the conference. Here's where it looks like, as far as the highest and lowest seeds, you see the amount of mobility that you can have. Florida has clinched the three seed with the win against Kentucky. Kentucky could be the four. Or it could be the five, based on what Arkansas does against Missouri. A&M's trying to avoid playing on Wednesday. For them to have to play on Wednesday, boy, South Carolina would also have to beat uh, Auburn. Georgia would have to beat Tennessee. So there's a lot of variables that are going to be played out over the next eight hours, ten hours of college basketball that will allow us to get a better and clearer picture, obviously, of what the bracket will look like. Yeah, we'll know tonight. If Arkansas wins, it gets the four seed. If they lose against Missouri today, then Kentucky will get the four seed in the final double by Missouri, by the way, playing without Michael Porter Jr. today. It was announced by the school this morning. Porter had been working his way back in practice, said, sent out a release that he's looking forward to getting on the floor soon, maybe in the SEC tournament. 
Two three zone now for Texas a and I like the length in this zone. The thing they've got to be careful of, sometimes they get beat on the back line because they're watching the ball. Sexton's running baseline. You've got to communicate through. Avery Johnson Jr. out to Braxton Key. Shot clock is at two. Key gets to the rack. And and him comes out of there with it. Tyler Davis with the board. Admon Gill there on the run. And he gets fouled on his way to the rim. Seven of the Aggies' nine points thus far have come second chance opportunities. The Aggies have done a great job on the glass. They get 34% of their misses. The problem has been their level of efficiency so far, Tom. They're just one for their last eight from the field, and they haven't scored a single point in three minutes and five seconds. That's not good. No. But I mean, that's what you kind of expect in this game, right? I mean, both of these teams, when they're at their best, what do they hang their hat on? Defense. Another one coming for Gilder. Part of that inconsistent Aggie roster of the course of the season, if not for performance and by health. He had a knee injury earlier this year, missed five games, and so T.J. Starks replaces him in the backcourt now. Starks got his first career start against Kansas. He brings another element to this team. That was not over and back, only a toe went over, not two feet in the ball. Colin Sexton was never established in the front court, so no over the back legally. Shot clock is at six. Sexton will launch with three. Side rim, and it's ripped down by Robert Williams. You gotta get better offense than that if you're Alabama. No flow. Move the ball. Space, it, what you see is a lot of ball watching. Mm. There's no ball watching right there. That's a great dump off and finish. TJ Starks is getting better and better every single game and understanding how to become a facilitator, not just a scorer for AM. As he drove down the middle of the floor right here, he forces the back line of the defense to step in. Sexton doesn't pinch in, out of position, swipes from behind. And needless to say, Sexton swiping at Tyler Davis is like me trying to swat a B. <laughs> it ain't happening. The B is always going to outsmart me, and usually I'm going to get stung. Davis. Has it rim out. We talked to another great point guard today about what he thinks of T.J. Starks. Avery Johnson said he's been really impressed by his play. But one thing really set out. Avery said you can tell that the guys on his team like him. And it's kind of like a football team. you got to like the quarterback if you want to have success as a team. And a big part of that is Tyler Davis' willingness to take him under his wing. Jump ball, and Avery Johnson Jr. commits a foul. It's his second on Jr. His dad's the little general. His teammates have taken to call him Junior the smaller general. If you're right, though, going back to Starks, and, and I love the analogy of the quarterback, right? You have to at least respect your quarterback. The more you respect him, the more you enjoy playing with him. Usually, the better the results become. You kind of sound like those guys breaking down the combine, right? I don't know. I mean, I, my 40 time isn't as good as some of those guys. <laughs> some. I could beat some of them. Yeah. Not all of them. Offensive linemen. I got you. Yeah, all day. Rich Eisen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a foul over the yeah. back. I threw the I gauntlet down on that one. Yeah. I don't want to see that. <laughs> this is a very low scoring affair. Alabama coming into this game, uh, coming into the season. With all of this talent, Avery Johnson said, we're going to finally run what I want to run, what I want to be, which is more tempo. Now things have slowed down as their offense has become inefficient. Well, and that's because, again, look at the movement. Watch this offensive possession. Watch the movement away from the ball. A lot of standing around. Reese tried to skip it, had it denied, stolen away by Robert Williams. Petty and Key in particular on that offensive possession never moved. They never moved, Tom. They, they were in transition. They stopped with where they were at out on the wings, and they stayed there. Even if you have two guys not moving, it allows the defense to pinch in, help. They're not having to rotate. There was no ball reversal action in that offense. They are missing a key part of their offense. Maybe not statistically, but from a communication standpoint, Herbert Jones is out in this game. He only averages four points and three and a half boards a game. But Avery Johnson really leans on his communication and his leadership. Why is he so important to their offense? Just the way he communicates. Uh, and it's not only just his offense, but it's also his defense. I mean, he's a really good on-ball defensive player. He's their best on-ball defensive player. 
He's excellent at taking charges. These are all things that have been noted over the course of the season. Offensively, he spaces the floor and helps get guys into the right position because their guards are quiet players. They don't communicate. It's never been an issue for you. I always talk. Sometimes too much. You know, I've got a clock on you right now. Here's Petty. Same clock you used for Mike Ireland, our director, when I beat him by 18 minutes to the restaurant and we left at the same time from the airport. It's unbelievable. The gas is on the right, Mike. I understand he stopped at squirrel run, though, because he got distracted. <laughs> Here's Petty. Shot clock at three. Another handoff. Back to Reese. Shot clock at one. And he will throw it up. And able to hit the rim, but here comes J.J. Chandler, the lob. Oh, yes, above the rim, Robert Williams. See what happens is you take four shots. You're not in good rebounding position. You're not even in good defensive transition position. And you allow the Aggies to get out in the open floor and feed it to the big fellow. Hall looked a little uncomfortable in there, but he still throws it in. First bucket for the junior from Laverne, Alabama. Starks with the left. Early shot. They went from having pass first point guards in this offense to a shoot first point guard in TJ Starks. In this match, Reese was falling away, used every bit of the rim. Well, he's lucky he made that shot. I have no idea why you're fading away. You got TJ Starks on you. Spin off of him, Alex, and go to the rim. They just up the backboard. Yeah, 6 9 versus 6 2. Advantage 6 9. Single digits on the shot clock again. Here's Ho. 6'9 junior. Just watch him. Kick back out. Starks has to fire. AM just one for seven from deep. They're shooting 32% in this one. Dejan Ingram may have gotten away with a step. Dante Hall with the offensive board and put back. Hall had a really good first outing in late December against AM. He was 7 of 8 from the field, 17 points in that game. Also had two blocks in that one. You can see him playing with the kind of confidence that's necessary to dominate the paint. He, he's welcoming the challenge of the length of AM. But to be fair, that was a different AM team back then. Yes. Injuries, suspensions. But if you're AM, same thing, okay? So we, we've been critical of Alabama's offense, but JJ Chandler, what kind of quality shot is that? One pass into the offense, contest the three pointers. I don't like that. Petty? Nope. Tipped out into Ingram's hands. Fresh 30 for Alabama. They might use all of it, and they're going to use a timeout here. It's a two point lead for Alabama. Alabama. Try to play the way into the NCAA tournament. Let's get you back to Kevin Connors in the studio. She'll have her eyes closed on 99% of the plays. An amazing senior day is such a special day in a player's career. Gosha Morelos came out and hit his first shot. He hit a three. Then he picked up a couple of fouls, not the way you want senior day to go. How do you control your emotions in a moment like that when you get out before the game they honor, try show it doesn't the video. matter Tom. it doesn't matter you can try all you want it's gonna get the best of you I, I remember mine I was all smiles and it Tony was emotional for his but I was all smiles on mine I ended up missing my first five shots <laughs> I was so tense and so tight I was like I gotta make it I gotta make it because you want to have a good senior day you want it to be a positive experience Three ball from Gilder. Nope. They also honored Dwayne Wilson today. Graduate transfer from Marquette, who's out for the remainder of the year of the torn ACL. He's been playing on that torn ACL, then hurt it again. He's already undergone surgery. But he may be the toughest guy in college basketball, the way he tried to play. Top, right now, if you're AM, you, know, you mentioned Coach Morelos made the first three corner of the game. The team is now. One for its last. It's one for ten overall in the game. They've missed nine straight from beyond the arc. 
turn it down and get those looks at the iron right now if you want to be successful in your AM. Nice ball movement. Section takes a shot to the forehead and he'll go to the free throw line. We've got two more Saturday showcase games presented by Five Hour Energy for you today. Number six, Kansas, the Big 12 regular season champs for the 14th straight year, take on Oklahoma State at 4 p.m. Eastern. Then Louisville squares off against NC State and Raleigh. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Oklahoma State knocked off Kansas in Allen Fieldhouse earlier this season. That was their third home loss of the year. I'll be interested to see how Louisville responds. Oh my gosh, after that game the other night against Virginia, and they're in the last four in according to Joe Lenardi. Imagine what a win against Virginia would have done. They wouldn't be showing on this screen, I'll tell you that right now. And you look at the first four out, Penn State. I would put Penn State in over some of those teams in the last four in, in particular USC. I think Coach Chambers has done a tremendous job this year. They're in the semifinals of the Big Ten Tournament. They beat Ohio State three times this year. The Nittany Lions deserve to be in the field. Ohio State has had a monster season, so that's a big win for Penn State. Meanwhile, Nebraska bowed out of the Big Ten tournament early, and they could be in danger of being only the third team since expansion with 11 Big Ten wins to not earn a bid. 91 Illinois and 2016 Illinois were the other two. It takes into account what the national perception is of the Big Ten this year. And it's not that dissimilar from what we saw a couple years ago in the SEC. Remember Georgia? They had 12 wins in the regular season and did not make the NCAA tournament to Mark Fox's team. I, I want to take exception with one word that you use, though, is, is perception. I mean, I know that it gets discussed on college game day and on our games, and you talk about teams and leagues that way, but you are who you are, are you not? I mean, perception is reality. The numbers are say the Big Ten has four quality teams and maybe none other. Well, and, and I think that it is the reality of it, but the reality of today's game is that this is significant for both these runs. I mean, Robert Williams so far in this game has only attempted three shots. Tyler Davis has been the most efficient offensive player. He's back out on the floor now. Turn down a three-point shot, get inside the paint. And those shots for Davis, the production has come and primarily it, an offensive rebound. And I've got a genuine concern for Alabama. John Petty enters the witness protection program every single time he goes on the road. I don't know if he, he doesn't like red uniforms. I don't know what it is, but I mean... He just really, really struggles when he's not at home. Uh, you look at the numbers in SEC play. Petty is shooting just 16% from the field, 17%, and 17% from three-point line in SEC on the road. He is 0 for 4 and 0 for 2 today. I mean, they got to get him going. If you're Alabama and you want to win on the road, and you're John Petty, you're one of the best freshmen in the country, you got to start making some shots away from home. Three out of four attempts for John Petty come from behind the arc. How would getting inside and finding some twos help that confidence or that road production? Well, he had a nice little up shot fake drive in the middle of key elevate up, and he still missed it. For him, he just got to see the ball go through the hoop. So it's not even settling for the mid-range shot. Ideally, trying to get to the iron, get fouled, go to the free throw line, see the ball go through the basket. Well, as great as the Stella is here locally, maybe he just doesn't like to stay in hotels. Ooh. Did somebody open the door? Oh, man. <laughs> got a, I, a, I'm a sorry. Nice smile. Well, at least that didn't happen on the road, right? The home crowd is very kind to Robert Williams after that miss. He's only 47% from the line. A miss well, is a miss. 47% is better than what the team shooting. They're shooting 25% during the first half. They're two for eight from the free throw line. They're free. No one's standing in front of him. <laughs> a poke from behind by Gilder and a steal for Texas A&M. What a lob. That was an aggressive line. And Robin Williams rips the rim again. Here comes Alabama the other way in transition. Sexton rolls it home. That is where Paul Sexton is at his best. And he can turn it on in a hurry. So a great play. Everybody sucked in the paint. They're all excited because he got a big dunk. Colin Sexton streaking down the sideline with the basketball. Sexton 61 points away from the Alabama freshman scoring record held by James Robinson back in the 90-91 season. It may have been basket interference. Avery Johnson Jr. left wide open. His dad told us we have to lean on him to take some open threes. We need other guys to knock down some jump shots, especially being on the road. That was an early three. That was a bad three. 
Sexton steps right into traffic and is able to draw the foul on hold. You wonder why that's a bad three, Tom? There's a lot of it, it, There's no pass in the offense. Watch it. This is the great lob. And then defended by Mark Williams. That was, that was good offense. And then in transition, look at how he just gets beat down the, the floor. You've got everybody pulling to where they're supposed to go, but you have nobody stop the ball. I want to go back to that previous possession, though, Tom. You don't have any pass in the offense. You flatten the offense out by dribbling into the corner like T.J. Sarks did. You miss the free the three corner that's bouncing towards your opponent's basket. They're at the head of steam. You've got everybody behind the ball. There's no chance of success. How do you have a big head in the Indian crowd? I don't get paid as much as Jimbo Fisher. That's why. No contract's not guaranteed like this. Section goes one or two from the line. I'm not a furry mascot either. <laughs> Not a good pass. There's the double. Shot clock at 10. Tyler Davis. Nice step through. He's got a team high eight. The tied at 21. There are going to be a lot of halves this year at Kyle Field where Jimbo Fisher's team scores more than 21. They do the opener on the SEC Network against Northwestern State. Is Northwestern State the Demons? Yes, they're purple. Yes. I'm going to bet the over on 21 points being scored in the first half. It's a safe bet, I think. Alan Sexton is 14 this half. An answered jumper from Admon Gilder. That's a two. So it's his second made field goal of the game. So we have this is kind of a low energy first half, right? Not for you and I. No, no. We've been fantastic, by the way. No, you, we're going to come out of the break. I, I'm just like looking forward to the second half. This is a must-win game for Alabama. And, and Texas A&M has a lot on the line, too. They're trying to avoid playing in the first day of the SEC tournament. Trying to go in there. You said they could win the thing. They could be a team that could compete for a title once we get to St. Louis. There is no sense of urgency in this game right now. Here's Reese with the turnaround. So Alabama's going to have 20 minutes really to decide its fate when it comes out of the locker room. Well, and you look at this first half, uh, that's a prime example. I mean, for Alex Reese, that you're not going to get a cleaner look. If you're Avery Johnson, what are you going to dial up that's going to give your guy a better opportunity? You're five feet away with nobody in front of you. You had Avery Johnson wired the other night during the game. What did you learn about Avery Johnson in this Alabama team? You literally listening into his huddles. Well, what I learned was that the carryover from scouting report to game, sometimes there's slippage. And that's not uncommon with a young team. Uh, but he was trying to remind his guys, hey, Jalen Hudson, he's going to go left. We're allowing him to go left. We told you not to get him to step back. You got to step back. We're telling you not to let him catch and shoot a three. We're giving him too much space. Those are all things they go over in the scouting court, and yet you're not seeing the carryover onto the court. And that's got to be what's most frustrating right now for Avery Johnson. He knows his group is talented enough to win some of these games that they're losing. And defensively, I think you'd be, you'd, you'd be pretty happy if before the game we said, hey, Avery, you know, you're going to go give up 24, 26 points in the first half. How do you feel about that? Feel really good. But the problem has been much the same as what we saw against Florida is consistency within their offense. Section fouled on the drive. He has scored the last seven for Alabama. Okay, so this is where he's at his best, right? He is a free throw attempting guard. He stops the clock. He can manufacture points, which you love. But what you don't love on that possession is where was the ball reversal? Where is the movement? Where are they going? So if he doesn't get fouled there in that situation and they're able to cut him off, who else is moving, spacing, trying to get to the open area? Go back to that win last night for Penn State over Ohio State. The guard stopped Tony Carr and then he ring, read it right and snuck behind and was moving without the ball. There's not a lot of movement without the ball right now for Alabama. Section is taken over. He has scored... Nine straight, Wooden Award late season top 20. One of the best players in the SEC, one of the best scorers. And yet with all that, they still have a lead. Up by one.
starts just running around. Shot clock like at 14. 10 second difference. And they turn it over into the hands of Petty. Shot clock is off. Alabama gives it right back. Oh my gosh. He's telling you he's allergic to red. The crimson. Yeah, it'd be crimson. Let's yes, the accurate. I want to make sure I'm accurate. Shoelaces are red. But I mean, come on. Catch and play with the basketball. Value. You don't have to do anything there. Okay, time and awareness. You have a one point lead and the ball. Just pick it up. Find your guard if you're not comfortable dribbling. See if the Aggies get a look inside. Shot clock, a game clock, I should say, is now at seven. Here's Starks trying to shake into the paint. Leaner, nothing. Alabama, if they want it, Avery Johnson Jr. after the buzzer. What a fantastic defensive first half here in Aggieland. Sexton has 11 of Alabama's 25. Both teams shooting.